Hello Lighthouse Home Groups, we're so glad that you joined us today uh, for discussion and Bible study. And uh, we are in the midst of a study on a book called The Circle Maker by Mark Batterson. And today we are gonna study chapter seven, uh, which is entitled, uh, The Answer to 10,000 Problems. And in this chapter, Mark asks a question sort of on behalf of God that I think we all need to wrestle with at different times throughout our lives. I've wrestled with this question personally many times throughout my life, especially just not too long ago when I had uh, some health concerns and complications after having knee surgery. It's a question where you might be able to verbalize an answer quickly, but living out that answer will take potentially a lifetime and maybe even into eternity. It's a question that weighs heavy into our perspective of God, which then in turn weighs heavy into the prayers we pray and even into the way that we live our lives as believers. Now that question from God via Mark Batterson in this book is, is there a limit to my power? Is there a limit to my power? And I believe that God is asking you that question right now. He's asking you that question an hour from now. He's asking you that question tomorrow and next week and next year. He's asking you that question with the next hardship that you might run up against. He's asking you that question with the next faith step that he asks you to take. He's asking you that question hoping that you'll find him to be the answer that you need. God asks this question multiple ways at various times to many different people throughout the Bible and also throughout history. For example, he asks Jeremiah in Jeremiah 32, 27, he says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? When God promises that a 90-year-old woman who has been barren her entire life will bear a son fathered by her 99-year-old husband, he says in Genesis, is anything too hard for the Lord? And when the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she will give birth to a son and that her elderly cousin Elizabeth is already pregnant, that angel says, for nothing will be impossible with God. And then Job speaks after God has displayed and spoken of his power, his glory, and his wisdom. He says, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. When there are hundreds of thousands of Israelites in the wilderness and God has promised them food to eat, and Moses is skeptical about this, it says, and the Lord said to Moses, is the Lord's hand shortened? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. And again, in Psalms, it says, whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all the depths. It also says in the Bible, have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. And that's Isaiah 40, 28 through 29. Two more examples. When the disciples wonder if anyone can be saved because it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom, the Bible says that Jesus looked at them and said, with man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. And then lastly, Jesus in the garden, he says, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but you will. Is there a limit to God's power? And the obvious answer is no. But how does your faith walk answer that question? Of course, we know there's no limit to his power. He simply spoke the words and created anything and everything you can possibly ever touch, hear, feel, see, smell, experience, or encounter. With just his words, he created. He used something immaterial to create material. Clearly, nothing is too hard for him. But answering that question and living out that answer are two very different things. 
We can say that nothing is too hard, that there's no limit to God's power, but do we live like there's no limit to God's power? I think sometimes we live our lives as if our problem has more power than our God. Or even as if the calling or the task that God gives us is beyond his ability to help us with. It's like we think we have a teacher who is unable to do the assignment himself. Or a tour guide who doesn't really know the correct path to take. Or even a general that we are unsure of his battle plan. But our God is more capable, more powerful, more wise than any earthly leader or authority we can imagine. God is greater than his requests. He's greater than your situation. He's greater than any hole that you might have dug that you find yourself in and now you're trying to climb your way out. He's greater than the greatest greatness you can conjure up in your mind about him. In fact, his greatness can't even be understood by humanity. Isaiah 55, 9, it says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So let's take those statements literally here for a second. As the heavens are higher than the earth, or as high as the heavens are above the earth. So what does that actually look like? As far as we've been able to discover, the full distance of our galaxy from one end to the other is 15 and a half billion light years. A light year is how far light travels in one year. So one light year converted to actual miles, hang on here, 5,865,696,000,000 miles. Now here's a practical example. Our sun at its furthest point from us is 94.4 million miles, which is nowhere near the number we just mentioned, but it's still hard to wrap our minds around. But even at 94.4 million miles away, light is fast enough that the sunlight you see and feel during the day left the sun just eight minutes ago. To put that in perspective, if there was a highway going from the earth to the sun, traveling at 65 miles an hour nonstop, it would take us 163 years to get there. And light makes that trip in just eight minutes. So the distance from our galaxy from one end to the other is the distance that light would travel in 15 and a half billion years. Mark Batterson says this, your best thought on your best day falls 15 and a half billion light years short of how great and how good God really is. Even the most brilliant minds among us underestimate God by 15 and a half billion light years. And God is able to do 15 and a half billion light years beyond what you can ask or imagine. His wisdom, his love, his ways, his thoughts, they're all exceedingly incomprehensible. And yet, nothing is too small of a detail for him to notice or pay attention to. As humans, we try to measure things and categorize things. This is big and this is small, or this is hard and this is easy, or this is doable and this is impossible. Understand this quote from Mark Batterson in The Circle Maker. With God, there is no big or small, easy or difficult, possible or impossible. There is no degree of difficulty. He provided 105 million quail in a desert for the Israelites. Do you think he's bigger than your situation? And my next question is, do you think 105 million quail was even slightly difficult for him? If God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine, Let's think about this. What if we put that kind of power to work in our lives, not for our own purposes, but for his purpose? What if we took on the mindset that I don't wanna be the hindrance to God accomplishing all he wants to accomplish here on earth through me? But praying small prayers is oftentimes one of the ways that we restrict ourselves from seeing the power of God at work in us and through us. What if we started praying big prayers that require big faith, that requires a big God? My guess is that we'll start seeing some big answers to those big prayers. Here's a quote to think about. Is your dream too big for you? And it better be, because that will force you to pray circles around it. If you keep circling it in prayer, 
God will get bigger and bigger until you see your impossible prayer for what it really is, an easy answer for an almighty God. So let's apply this a little bit. What kind of prayers are you praying right now? Are they small prayers or are they big audacious prayers? What's keeping you from praying bigger prayers and believing for greater things? Do your prayers absolutely require a big God to come through in a big way? Let's allow the Holy Spirit to direct our thoughts and conversations as we discuss these questions and let's allow Him to inspire dreams and God ideas in our hearts. My prayer in closing is that with the progression of each new realization of how big our God is, how great His power is, that our faith will be put into action in bigger and bigger ways as we live out the new realization of His great power.